Yep, we're on another trip. It's Roxanne again, and this time we are in Cherry Hill, New Jersey for MonsterCon. We're kicking off Halloween with a bang. If you book your tickets far enough in advance, they'll send you wristbands in the mail. Unfortunately, we found out about this event going on like two weeks ago, so it was too late. So sadly, we're going to have to take our QR codes and wait in line, so that kind of sucks. Um, and we heard from other people that they've been waiting for like five hours to get uh, Robert England's signature, which is who I'm here to get. Freddy Krueger! He's my favorite. The man of your dreams. And at least we'll get a picture with him no matter what, hopefully, because we paid a lot of money for that. It was like $130. And we'll also get a picture with Clive Barker and all the Cenobites from Hellraiser, so that'll be awesome. And so hopefully we'll also be able to get a signature, but it sounds like wait times are crazy long. So we are up really, really early, two hours before the convention even starts, and I guess we're going to eat real quick and then probably get our wristbands and start waiting in line if they'll let us. Wish us luck! Just got here off the shuttle and there's already a line. We haven't even made it inside yet. Alright, we made it out of one line. Now we're in another line. This one is for the signatures. They don't open till 10. It's now 9 o'clock. We're open. <laughs> Something went into my mouth. <laughs> like, like, Windex or something. But anyway, uh, we're hoping, waiting now, we won't have to wait five hours, maybe only two hours or something. Hope. Here's the pamphlet that you get once you get your band. It doesn't have a whole lot of information in it. That's the photo op schedule. We got a map. And this is like the film and event schedule. But it's not very good at telling you where stuff is. But hey, we're managing. And here's the back side. Hi, update! So we found out we were in the wrong line, so now we're in a new line, and this one unfortunately is in the sun, uh, so hopefully we'll be seeing Robert England soon, maybe in a couple hours. Cross your fingers! <laughs> up on waiting. We waited for since 8 30 this morning until now I think it's 11 30 probably. We wanted to enjoy the convention. We'll get a picture with him later. So that's that. A lot of wasted time. 
One thing I, I, I will say, here's some of the things you don't see that happen behind the scenes. I got a call, I guess it was Thursday morning, telling me that the flight that Robert England was on was, at first I was told it was going to be delayed, then I, because of mechanical failure, then I was told the flight was going to be canceled. This is how I wake up the day that we're getting ready to set up the show and the stars are coming in. And you get this uh, message that Robert Eaglin's flight is delayed and then uh, maybe half an hour after that I got the message that his flight was canceled. The only seats that were available, we had booked first class flights for him. It's a six hour flight and, and his wife Nancy. And I'm like, and, and there's no first class flights to be had coming into Philadelphia. So, you know, that's a promoter's nightmare. To this man's credit, he gets on a coach play. I don't even want to know what row they put you in. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Lance Hendrickson sent me drinks. <laughs> Lance was in one C and took care of me. <laughs> so, uh, much to his credit, many, many, many other stars would have just said, oh, sorry, Dave, I can't make the show. Robert's here. No, I like it. I found out. Guys. Top 10 for three or four weeks called Grawl. And this, uh, I mean, I, and Barry Pepper, I love this actor, Barry Pepper. And apparently, it's just like the perfect drive in movie or the perfect summer movie, you know, cold pizza and warm beer. And, and thou. <laughs> Wife beaters. And I got a little side boob. You know? <laughs> And I would, make, I would make her drive to locations I already had because I'd sit in the back seat, you know, with my bottle of water and just look at her side boob because uh, I just wanted to be around her. And uh, a, a little while later, in a famous bar that's in Once Upon a Time in America, the new, the new Tarantino film, uh, we kissed in the alley. And, and, you know, I'm not a kid anymore. And uh, it was like that teenage kiss. My knees almost buckled. And I've been around the block by now, right? <laughs> and, uh, and I knew, I knew this was it. But I also knew I didn't have my, I was running on empty with love. And there was a great sentimental, old romantic comedy in the movie theaters that year that I had seen called uh, it was with um, Sally Field, and I'm trying to, oh, and James Garner, Rockford Files. And James Garner, it's a May-December relationship, and James Garner says to Sally Field, I'm in love for the last time. I'm a thief. I'm the thief of Baghdad. So I turned to Nancy and I leaned up as cool as I could in the parking lot of this cool bar after this kiss. Because I had to, not because I'm being cool, because I was afraid my knees were going to buckle. Because I just had the best soft kiss of my life. I felt like a 14 year old boy and I said, I think I'm in love for the last time of my life. And she looked at me for a long time and she said, Well, clean up your baggage and we'll talk. <laughs> and love that can go the distance. Now, he's not a kid anymore either. The rumor I've heard that I like is Kevin Bacon. Kevin loves horror. He's a, he's a real actor, he's a character actor. He happens to be handsome and cute and sexy and physical, but his talent is really a character actor. Watch him on City on the Hill if you don't believe me. Right now, HBO. Here's the thing. Kevin was great in Tremors. Kevin was great in Stir of Echoes. And I've heard this rumor. He's maybe a half an inch taller than me. He's got a better abs than I have. I've got, I've got no abs. I've got french fries from the Crown Blossom. But we need someone like that to take it on and redo it. And redo it exploiting all of the new technology. You guys, Inception. Uh, the Robin Williams movie, When Dreams May Come. Those effects today, 2019, 
are even more remarkable. What they did with Inception and what they did with the Robin Williams film, they can do those effects even more mind-blowing. But they lend them... No one ever tells you that clicking internationally is important. You guys, I can do a pilot tomorrow that I love. It could be great. And it doesn't sell. And I get a job in Italy, and I go to Italy, and my wife and I live in Rome, and she's some beautiful girl, like I said earlier, a beautiful girl around a castle, you know, and I wear a dark turtleneck, you know, and cool sunglasses. It's, to be international is the greatest blessing in the world. I was in Buenos Aires, Argentina, a couple of years ago with Nancy, and we get down there, and it's huge. We're in a movie studio, and we're drinking Malbec, the great red wine that comes from Argentina. We're looking for cool restaurants. That's what Nancy and I want to do. But we're there, and while we're there, in the tip of Argentina, money, they have money. And there's also extreme poverty. But they are obsessed with Japanese horror. They know more about Japanese horror than you guys do. It's unbelievable how that stuff just t just hits certain cultures differently. You never know it. You can never guess it. You can never anticipate it. But it's this wonderful thing to see about how small our world is. To know that life. <laughs> We love it. We're so cheap. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, please, a big round of applause. Mania, and actually it's probably still going on. We left early in the morning because we wanted to get out before traffic so we didn't go for Sunday. Um, but first of all, let's see what all the stuff that I got. So one of the things we got is a signed picture from Hellboy. So that was pretty cool. And I bought this art piece from of the Cheshire Cat from the Chroma Coma and he works in oil pastels so that is pretty cool looking. We got um, I always forget his name, Lloyd Kaufman to sign a copy of uh, Father's Day for us. If you haven't seen this movie it's crazy so see it it's, it's really funny. Lloyd Kaufman was so nice and he was doing, he was taking pictures and signing stuff for free and unlike the other celebrities, don't worry celebrities, I get it, you gotta make money. We also got a group picture with uh, Clive Barker and all the Cenobites, oh, that was awesome. They also did a panel and I have some footage from that panel. And of course, the reason we went, we got a picture with Freddy! I'm so happy! Freddy, Freddy, Freddy! I always wanted to meet him. He's my favorite horror creature. And finally, I did. didn't get to say much to him, but we got, we got to meet him. We actually got two of those. 
So let's talk about the con itself. It's not a bad con. It has a lot of awesome guests that they got and that was really cool. The bad thing is there's some stuff about it that's just poorly organized. So if you're thinking about going to Monster Mania, I would suggest definitely buying the VIP passes. We were going to buy them, but they were already, already sold out once when we decided to go. So we just got regular passes. And what was happening was we were waiting in line to meet Robert England and get a signed autograph. And but all the VIP people were use they get one skip the line, and most of all of them were using it for Robert England. So we waited for three hours and we had heard people on Friday had waited five to eight hours to get a signature from him because he's also, while you're waiting, taking breaks, going off to do photo ops and then coming back and so you still have to wait in line while that, all of that's going on. So you wait forever. Plus Robert England, he spends a lot of time with the people when he, um, signs the picture, takes pictures with you sometimes, um, and tells stories and stuff. So he doesn't just sign it and next, he wants to talk to you. And that's just his personality when you at the con and in the panel, you can tell that's just his personality. And when we got a picture taken, he's very talkative and vocal and having fun with everything. And it was really awesome. Um, but so after three hours of waiting and we were only going for Saturday, so we were there at 8.30 a.m. and about 11.30 I said, we have the photo op, it's just not worth it to spend the entire convention standing in a line and they made you stand outside in the heat. I get that there's not a lot of space in there and capacity and they don't want lines blocking. Maybe you need a bigger location, that hotel just isn't working anymore or stop selling tickets. I know you're trying to make money, but it you can't do it at the sacrifice of the people going to your convention. Anyway, so we did get to at least meet Robert England and we went to his panel, which is really great. And now the wolf photography people, they're pretty organized until something goes wrong. Like everything for them was on time and it went really fast. I was like, I have no, I used to work as a wedding photographer. So when I saw like hundreds of people and they're going to shoot all these people in 15 minutes, it's like, no way. But it was super organized and they really knew what they were doing. So it, they did fly through those pictures pretty quick. I was actually surprised by the lack of panels that they had at the convention. There's only like three. The um, Hellraiser group did a panel. Robert England did a panel. They had a, a co costume contest. And I don't know if you can count Rocky Horror Picture Show as a panel. It's just more of, a vent, of, of an event. And they had a movie room. But other, other than waiting in lines for celebrities, that's all there was to do other than eat and drink and vendors. They had a ton of vendors. They had like maybe four different vendor rooms and they were all horror related and it was really awesome. And you'll see some footage of the different uh, vendors. So I don't know, maybe get some horror writers to come in, big names in horror to come in and do panels as well. I, I'm gonna guess the celebrities didn't want to do panels and that's why there aren't very many. I don't know. Or maybe there just isn't enough rooms. So again, more evidence. You guys need a bigger location. Um, and what else? The vendors were great and on theme and there were tons of them. So you'll definitely find all kinds of stuff to buy. We just bought a little bit because we're going to Japan soon and we're also going to be doing a whole bunch of stuff for Halloween so we gotta bring it in a little bit. So another issue I had with this convention is the lack of information. Um, unless you've been going to this particular, this particular convention for years, you have no idea where to go or what to do or what's going on and there's very little information. There's just a tiny little pamphlet. I can 
find it here with very little information which I showed earlier and so like the problem we had like we show up it says Riverside is where all the signings are happening so we get we paid for the early entrance we get there and we get in early and so we get in line for the Riverside room only to find out just because a staff person just happens to say something that Robert England and Clive Barker's signing lines were not they weren't in that room they were somewhere else which the pamphlet had no information about that and so she told us yeah you have to line up for that outside in front of the hotel we we're like crap so we go running and we get in that line and by that time it was already five hour plus wait because we were in the Riverside line for a while before we knew we were in the wrong line. So putting some information like, here's the headliners, these people's rooms are not in Riverside, they're here instead, would have been nice if we would have gone to the right line and maybe have actually gotten Robert England's uh, signature. Maybe even Clive Barker's if we'd gotten there early enough. So that was a little frustrating. And then there's not a whole lot of direction like when it comes to the photography stuff, what to do. Um, it's hard to explain. You just there's just a lack of information and a lack of organization. Like they would just move us and the line would get all messed up and then people were angry because they were waiting longer and people got ahead of them because people would just you know, run for it when they'd say, we could move this line, you're blocking the way. So it was just frustrating. They should be prepared for that. And they were talking about how all this happened last year. Well, if it happened last year, why didn't you get something ready for that? So we did have a good time at this convention, but it was at a cost for sure. So my tips, if you're going to Monster Mania, because they do two of them, now they're, th they're said they're going to add another one in June. Um, definitely buy, pay the extra money, get the VIP, or forget about getting autographs from the headliners. Um, also, show up early for everything. Definitely get the early entry, which I think comes with VIP. Save a lot of money if you're planning to go because all the autographs and the photo ops are pretty expensive. We paid $140 to get a picture with Robert England. We paid $160 to get uh, pictures with Clive and the Cenobites, which on the site said the Cenobites were going to be in costume or made you think that they were going to be in costume and they weren't. So. We were a little disappointed, but that's okay. At least we still got to meet them and get a picture. Be prepared to wait in really long lines, hours, hour long lines, um, outside. So if you're going in the winter and it's March, make sure you're prepared for that. And if you're going in the summer and it's super hot, like 90 degrees for hours, as you can see, I'm a little bit sunburnt, um, make sure you're dressed for that. I would not go in full head to toe costuming and then have to roast in 90 degree weather in that. Don't do it. I had a sweaty or a Freddy sweater I wanted to get a picture in and it was just so hot I just had it tied around myself all day. But it can be a fun convention. I think it would have been a lot more fun if we had the VIP ticket. So book far in advance and when you do book in advance you get all that stuff mailed to you so you don't have to wait in any line. You just put it on and you go right in when it opens. I'm not saying don't go. They get awesome guests. But just be aware of all this other stuff that happens. So hopefully they find a better way to do stuff. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll, prob we'll probably go to more horror conventions and science fiction and fantasy ones. Our next biggest trip is, of course, going to Japan. So that'll be awesome. So please come by if you're interested in Japan and see those videos as well. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Bye-bye.